Hi, Stephen from Owner Disown. Looking for a six core gaming laptop below $1,000? Well, I have thrown everything at this Omen 15. I've measured clock speeds, power consumption, frame rates, and temperatures across several different games and real life applications. So let's see how fast and hot this thing gets. First and foremost, the Omen 15 packs some serious hardware in a chassis that is just under one inch thick. You've got a six core i7-8758 CPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 256 gigabyte SSD, it's a PCI Express, and a 7200 RPM hard drive, one terabyte for storage, and a full six gigabyte GTX 1060, um, all for $9.99 at Micro Center. You can buy the 17 inch version, the 17T direct from HP. Now the plastic back panel has a combination of a brushed uh, aluminum look and a herringbone texture, punctuated by the centrally located Red Omen logo. It certainly will tell people that you have a gaming laptop, and although I'm not a super fan of the, uh, of the back panel design, I really like the rear exhaust vents and the great ports on the back. Having the display and Ethernet ports on the back makes so much sense. It keeps all the cables out of the way. You have Thunderbolt 3, you have mini display, HDMI 2.0, USB 3.1 type A and the ethernet port. Either side, you have two deep hinges that raise the screen uh, up by about a centimeter and this is to allow for the fairly large rear heat sinks. Now on the left hand side, there is a USB 3.1 type A, a headphone mic jacks and an SD card reader. And good news, the SD card goes practically all the way in. So it's not gonna snag on your bag. On the right hand side, we have a third USB 3.1 port and the power connector. So, you know, all in all, we have a nice clean look. The rest of the chassis has a sculpted angular look, which, you know, I like. The edges are tapered and this actually gives it the feel that it is actually slimmer than it really is. The bezels are also nice and small, so the laptop looks slick and modern. The panel is a 60 Hz IPS and it's made by Chi Mei. It doesn't have G-Sync, nor does it have Optimus, and it runs off the GTX 1060 all of the time. It handles glare fairly well, despite it not being very bright, uh, but if there is a bit of light to shining on it, you may have to adjust it to get the, that, that decent image. Now, don't buy it for good color accuracy, though. Now, unfortunately, my unit did show quite a bit of backlight bleed as well. In terms of ghosting, it is similar to the Dell G3 that I reviewed. Now up top, you do have the 720p webcam and it is much better than that of the G3. Now, not that this is heavy, you know, at five pounds, nine ounces, but it, uh, it, since its footprint is smaller than say the Dell G3 or the G7, it feels more compact and dense. Um, this uh, solid feel is also reflected in the keyboard deck, which is uh, brushed aluminum and it is very solid. The Synaptics trackpad is smooth and it works okay. Not as good as witness precision, but you know, it's perfectly fine. And I do like having those separate mouse buttons. The island style keys um, have uh, no flex and they're quite large and uh, have a decent uh, spacing, which is uh, amazing considering that you have uh, a smaller chassis and you also have a separate uh, number pad. You also have a separate button that opens the Omen control center. Here, you can monitor the system utilization and temperatures um, you have Network Booster, which allows you to prioritize uh, programs, and Dual Force enables uh, Ethernet and Wi-Fi to be used simultaneously. You can also alter the key lighting in four zones, with the AWSD keys being their own zone. There's no flashing keys here, no, uh, but static is fine in my book, and you can alter the color and brightness of each zone easily. I like it too. It's nice and bright, but you cannot adjust the brightness via the keyboard. It's just on or off. Now, under performance control, you can choose either default or performance. Switching to the performance does increase fan speed, but it also increases the power consumption, which, as you can see here, playing Doom. The average temperature of both the CPU and the GPU is higher, yet the frame rates are the same. I did all of my testing using the performance, but based on this, I would be inclined to keep it all at default. One exciting feature is GameStream, and this lets you connect wirelessly to your host PC, your Omen laptop or desktop. Uh, you can either do a remote desktop experience, so you share the same screen, 
or you can uh, stream a game. They do rec uh, recommend having a, uh, at least a five gigahertz uh, wireless connection. And uh, within the same network in the, in the house, it uh, worked pretty well, to be honest. It um, worked quite well. But when I tried uh, connecting uh, using uh, my cell phone as a uh, modem, for example, on my second laptop, um, it uh, would start a game, but nothing would be shown on on the screen, and and indeed the streaming test failed as well. So um, I'm on the fence on how useful it is uh, in terms of being remote. It's certainly okay if you're in the same network, but if you've got a laptop in that case, I don't see that much benefit. But anyway, it does hold some promise. You uh, have the usual Windows 10 bloatware and uh, some HP software like Jumpstart and ePrint, which, uh, you know, to be honest, I do not see any use for. Now, at this price point, having Thunderbolt 3 is great, and I was able to play Overwatch at 3840 by 1600 using ultra settings at about 90 frames per second. And a good thing, too, is that since the uh, eGPU is doing most of the heavier lifting, the CPU stays nice and cool. Now make sure you have an external monitor though, because, because if you're trying to play on the separate, uh, you know, the internal laptop screen here, it will, ten, it will use the GTX 1060 all at a time. Now getting inside is easy. You remove a few Phillips head screws and you will notice two large mesh uh, intakes. We have the 70 watt hour battery, which is good for about three and a half hours, the 7200 RPM hard drive, Wi-Fi card and PCI Express SSD slot. Here we have the CPU and here we have the GPU. The fan blades are actually quite large and we have one shared heat pipe and uh, two smaller individual ones uh, leading to uh, sizable heat sinks. Underneath this flap, we have uh, two RAM slots. It comes with one 16 gigabyte stick, but you can max it out to 32 gigabytes. And here at the front, you have two speakers. Unfortunately, they aren't the loudest at 64 decibels but I still had no issue hearing the gaming action over the fans, which are quite quiet. They are bang and uh, aloof and speakers uh, too. So, you know, I was a little bit disappointed that they weren't that loud. And, and also the audio software doesn't have that many options. The laptop shipped with BIOS number three and that load um, only got to, to 30 decibels and uh, this resulted in very hot temperatures. So HP released their BIOS number five to ramp up the fan speeds. Idle fan noise is quiet at 24 decibels, and under heavy load, they increase to 45 decibels, which is a good thing. But despite this, using the performance setting, you will uh, still get to high peak temperatures on the CPU up to 98 degrees at stock, but with an average of 75. This is much higher than the G7. Undervolting helps and shaves, uh, does shave off a few degrees, so you can see why I you know, recommend sticking with the default power profile. The GPU temperatures are, are also higher uh, than the Dell G7, but still reasonable, you know, maxing at 76 degrees. Let's look at chassis temperatures under load. Above the keyboard is in the mid 40s, but does get quite hot in the center of the keyboard, um, but with the AWST keys and the palm rests, you know, remaining nice and cool. Underneath, you can see how warm it is over those air intakes, so I wouldn't recommend gaming on your lap and risk blocking those vents. And looking around the back, you can see how much uh, heat comes from uh, that uh, six core CPU. At load, it pulls about 160 watts. So the included 200 watt power brick is perfect. Most manufacturers actually ship 180 watt uh, power brick for the GTX 1060, uh, but some only ship 150 watts. In the BIOS, you can change the, the power to the CPU. By default, it averages, averages 25 to 45 watts. So here you can uh, uh, actually limit it down all the way down to 20 watts. I tried it at 35 and 20 watts. At 35 watts the battery life increased by 10 minutes and at 20 watts we actually squeezed out another 10 minutes of juice. You know not really worth it in my opinion. I applied my usual tweak to uh, boost the CPU performance increasing the multipli multipliers to 41 on all six cores. Let's look at a handbrake encode. At stock we got just over 31 minutes. That's a minute faster than the G7, but the CPU averaged 3,100 megahertz and averaged 84 degrees, peaking at 98. Applying my tweak with uh, the undervolt saw a two minute saving and a huge increase in average clock rate with lower temperatures. Switching to the 35 watt uh, profile saw a nice reduction in temperatures, but look at the average clock rate. 
It is faster than the i7-7700HQ, but is it worth it? Switching to the 20 watt profile and playing a game is a big no-no. You will see frame rates in the low fours, which makes it unplayable. I overclocked the GPU by 167 MHz, which is pretty decent for a GTX 1060. In Far Cry 5, using ultra settings, the average CPU temperature was 72 degrees with a peak at 90 degrees. The GPU hovering in the 80 range with a utilization in the high 90s. I averaged 61 FPS and 64 when overclocked. This beat the G7 and the Aero 15W. Quite a solid, solid performance, I would say. Overwatch, epic settings, the GPU hovered around 80 degrees, again maintaining a good boost clock and the CPU averaged 83 degrees. On average, I got 105 FPS, which is much better than the G3 and overclocking eked out another 5%. In Rise of the Tomb Raider, we continue to see high GPU utilization and the uh, CPU hovering around the 3500 MHz mark. Uh, the CPU averaged 72 degrees and again the GPU hovered around about 80 after a sustained load. Performance again it was top notch, so, uh, you know, outshining both the G3 and the G7. Overclocking seeing a 10% improvement over that of the G3. In Rainbow Six Siege, max settings, the CPU averaged 62 degrees and maxed out at 85, with the GPU maxing at 70 degrees. Once again, it comes out on top, beating the G7 and the Aero 15W by 10%. Finally, let's take a look at CPU performance during Adobe Premiere Pro. We get a solid performance at stock, beating the G7 by two minutes. But if we push them both, they become very similar. Applying my tweak uh, shaves off a minute and a half uh, whilst also reducing the max temperature. So how would I sum up the Omen 15? Well, for $1,000, you get a solid laptop with a very nice keyboard deck, large keys that are comfortable to use, and the fan noise is low. Temperatures can be also be managed using the default power profi profile and using an undervolt. Performance is also very solid, uh, beating out uh, most of the GTX 1060 laptops that I have tested so far. The screen is okay. You know, it's helped by these thin bezels for sure, but it's not bright and the color accuracy is not great. So its target audience is the gamer on a budget. And it does that very well. I'd like to thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.